a lot of you are wondering if I'll still drive for Kerber. And if I'll still share stories from the more comical and slightly spooky endeavors. The answer is yes. I wanted to address that first and put your minds at ease. After this last weird stint, I'll need to take a break. But I will continue the drives and I will share a few of the most interesting ones. As for a book? Eh, I'm not sure. Maybe. When I reach 25 rides, maybe I'll hire someone to ghostwrite that novel. See what I did there? The location to picking up Michael, don't trip, he said it was fine, was a shanty little bar that looked like it was in loud, indoor smoking, and turned a blind eye to quaaludes. Michael was dressed in a cowboy boots with an adorable matching hat, a pastel orange western style shirt, and a very neat blue jeans. He resembled either a cop or someone who was trying to be a cowboy for the very first time. Kind of like those Scandinavian folks who are obsessed with westerns and intentionally go to Alamo without a field trip slip. Westerns are boring and I'm not sorry for saying it. He almost anxiously got to the front passenger seat of my car. His apprehensive nature completely negates what I heard on the phone. Goody, more weird shit that doesn't make sense. Maybe I'm just too simple, who knows. He gets into my car and I look at him, I'm expecting the first swing. Up close, he looks exhausted and in the middle of an existential crisis. I did not want to relate to this weirdo. Are you asshole? I ask, completely ready to die. It's inevitable in this line of work. Are you the intellectual? Oh right, you're the dumbass that is about as well-mannered as a toddler riled up on Red Bull. Oh my god, he is me. I think I'm in love. Who are you? I asked, completely befuddled. I wanted to kill this guy just two minutes ago, very slowly. Now I kinda wanna take this inside for a beer. Now you can't read either? How did they even let you have a license? In fact, how are you even still alive? He gave me this crazy one wide-eyed expression. Leaning his face entirely too close to mine. Oh, and yes, he did sound like a genuine cowboy. Are you just going to keep asking me unhelpful questions or are you going to play ball and tell me what intonation is going on? Yeah, I mocked him. We're in love now. It's okay. Alright, I'm not Wade. I'm Michael, the Archangel. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. We have shit to do, son. He said, pointing to my mounted phone. On the screen was a destination in a residential area. A nice neighborhood that doesn't settle me in anyway. Rich people are creeps worse than my passengers. Self-made monsters. Terrific. While we make our way there, you mind telling me why you decided to intercept my very well-earned date with death and dismay? I ask, less pushy. Despite enjoying this back-and-forth banter, I figured it was a bad idea to piss off an angel responsible for assembling victorious ethereal armies. I may be sassy, but I promise I'm not as stupid as I look. I don't care about dying, but no one is actually trying to earn a fast track to hell. Divination, son. What's it look like? He asked, putting a poorly handmade cigarette in his mouth. You're about to go marching to your death, and you have the balls to think you've got the balls for it. Uh, what? I ignored the fact that he lit up a cigarette in my car, which is typically a no-no, since this is technically a company car and I'm still pissed at Adeline. I was just traveling down an even deeper rabbit hole of confusion. Alright, I need to re-examine the facts. You're an angel, right? As in, one of the angels? Yeah. He took a long, heroic drag of his cigarette and continued. And I'm here to save your sorry ass. You're about to tangle with a lone skinwalker. He raises his eyebrows at me. The Native American myth? 
guess I shouldn't call it a myth at this juncture. That's right. What's dangerous about a lone skinwalker is they've been casted out of their tribe. He's only 150 years old. Very young. Yeah, he's basically a fetus. I say, rolling my eyes. No, you would be a fetus in this situation. There are skinwalkers that are nearly as old as me. I immediately wanted to ask how old he was, but I thought better of it. The reason he is so dangerous is he is lawless, not bound to any tribal rules. Those skinwalkers have little of those to begin with. I immediately tap my thumb on the steering wheel, now slightly excited to land at our next stop. I think I know what's coming. Since you're too bullheaded to back down and too stupid to handle this alone, I decided to help you out. He grins, showing a couple gold cap teeth and a radiating confidence. In turn, I also felt confident. Thanks. Now where are we? I asked, putting my car in park and killing the ignition. I have a guy who keeps everything you need right here in his home. Can't exactly run a storefront with this type of material on account of licensing being a necessity in this state. Some folks just need to handle an advanced problem just one time. He unbuckles his seatbelt and climbs out of the car. Michael doesn't bother knocking and enters the home. Every room was unburdened with furniture as well as a lack of lighting. We head down to the basement which was lit with a light violet bathing in the room in an emotional shade of calm. Littered about the room, which I can only describe as an organized mess of different types of weapons, stood a drag queen. Yep, very clearly a drag queen. The only reason I could even guess this was the cartoon inspired makeup and wig that looked like it could be a living creature piled high on his head. From the neck down, he was dressed in a skin tight tracksuit exposing his well kept physique. I know. Keep your mouth shut, Jim. Azel! I've brought the kid with the mouth on him, Michael says, pointing behind himself at me. In the most flamboyant voice imaginable, Azel replies, Hey, honey! You're dancing with a skinwalker! Azel does a mild salsa dance behind his workbench. So I'm told. I'm trying to remain professional because not only am I standing in the presence of an archangel, the drag queen standing before me is a demon. I know what Azel is. Okay, I'm going to give you a 9mm handgun, two 11 round magazines of pure silver, a Molotov cocktail, and a lighter. Now you can't kill a skinwalker with silver, it'll only slow it down. Do your best to aim for his legs and arms. When a skinwalker dumps its human form, it'll have freakishly quick abilities in both arms and legs. So don't skip any limbs. By the time Azel was finished giving me these directions, he had piled everything into a backpack. I'm sorry, I have to ask. Both Michael and Azel were looking at me as though I was burdening them. Angels and demons work together? Fawn. Asshole. I'm a fawn. Azel crosses his arms glaring at me. Right. You guys actually work together? I ask. Yes, Michael replies. Fallen were angels once too. Not all demons have bad intentions. Some, like humans, quite a lot. And want to maintain a sort of balance. Alright. I grab the backpack. Completely done with religious topics. You mind fixing the interception, Michael? I would really like to finish this. Sure, kid. He waves at Azel and we begin our ascent from the basement. One more thing, Jim, says Azel, waving. Don't miss. You can't afford to miss. I nod with a smile and say, thanks, Azel. He smiles and turns around to finish his original project. As we're walking back to the car, I rehearse my plan in my mind. I've never actually shot a firearm before. So this was going to be interesting. I've also never had to huck a Molotov before. I may actually die trying to kill this thing. Michael and I get back into the car and I ask him. Alright, 
I have to know. Why is Azel a drag queen? Michael let out a single chuckle and said, Well, Azel was cast out of heaven for teaching humans how to build weapons and put war makeup on. He's always enjoyed cosmetics, so he decided to make it a hobby. Sounds reasonable, I said with a genuine nod. So what does Wade want? Obviously, Michael has answers. I'm not going to be shy about asking. Not that I ever had that problem to begin with. Michael pulls out another shanty stoge, lights up, and gets comfortable. Do you remember what it was like losing Angela? How you felt lost, empty, and your life just had less flavor? Yes, I replied. Well, when some folks lose their sense of home and their people, they begin grieving in one of two common ways. Some become hollow, much like yourself. Some become angry and develop an insidious agenda. They hurt others to gain control of their own path, Michael says, never breaking eye contact. So why Angela? I ask. Victim of circumstance, son. She's special, but not that special. He replied. Any idea as to why there was a silver bullet hanging from her body? What about that insanity parade he conducted on her corpse? I'm angry now. Not at Michael. I haven't had a taco in several hours. I put the bullet there. I was hoping that someone would have caught onto the clue. Of course, that was bust. He takes another drag of his cigarette. The mutilation was pure rage. He's lost and upset. That's why he killed Angela before he had his fun with her. Watch it, Michael, I said swiftly. My sister isn't a sideshow attraction. Easy, son, he said calmly. I was actually hoping to piss him off. Point being is he didn't have a reason. The whole point of all of this is he's just doing vile things out of rage. I was entirely unsatisfied with that answer. It's one thing to murder someone with intent, but to entirely disregard all life over a temper tantrum is a whole other level of evil. Do you know where Angela is? I asked. She's home, kid, he said pointing upward. Her time here was served. She brought you to where you needed to be, so it was time for her to return. The oxygen in every fiber of my being was sucked right out of my body. Oh. Sorry, kid. He puts one hand on my shoulder and squeezed. But we all go home at some point. That's just how it is. Yeah, I croaked. What was the point of even going after this thing now? The only reason I got involved was to help Angela cross over. She's done that now. Listen, I know you're probably thinking of quitting. Would you honestly want this to happen to another young lady? A child? He asked me gently. You put way too much faith in my integrity. I shook my head, scuffing. But no. I don't want this to happen to anyone else. I'm going to finish this. Good, Michael said, patting me on the shoulder. We spent the rest of the ride in silence while Michael chain-smoked. I continued to rehearse my plan and I was losing confidence with every repetition. Maim and set it on fire. Maim and set it on fire. Maim and set it on fire. I pull up in front of the bar I had originally picked Michael up from. Since Michael was not a danger to me in the slightest, his ride ended up being free. That's fine. I was in no position to pout about finances after the free gear to roast my sister's killer. Michael gets out of the car and rounds his way to my window. You gotta lay off the Mexican food, son. It'll kill you. He half smiled and walked away. Thanks, Michael, I replied, watching him walk into the bar. I decided that this job was far too much for me. I couldn't possibly do this. Well, not alone. I exit the Kerber app and decide to make a phone call. Jim? Borg barks into the phone. Borg, I replied, attempting to match his gusto. Hi, Jim. Feeling better? I can hear his tusks scraping the phone as he spoke. Yeah, thanks, Borg. I put the backpack of Arsenal in my back seat. You feel like taking down a skinwalker with me tonight? 
Borg hate Skinwalker. Borg help. Jim have right protection. Jim stupid. Borg have to ask. The gelatinous juvenile dick. Yes, Borg, I say, trying to remember his honesty isn't personal. I have silver bullets and a Molotov. Okay, Jim. Only fire kill Skinwalker. Borg wrestle for Jim. I could hear whatever poor recliner he was ascending from cry out as he stood. Thanks, Borg. Oh, and one more thing? I add. Yes, Jim? Borg replies. Take a shit before you get into my car. Please.